Hi, I'm Natalie from Demacia Farms and I'm going to show you how I shear my goats. One of the most important things when you're shearing a goat is to have combs that have a lot of teeth, like a 22. I actually am out of my 22, so I'm going to use something that has fewer teeth. You have to be very careful because Angora goats have a lot of skin folds and it's very easy to hook them with your comb and end up cutting them pretty badly. Um, as a matter of fact, I um, got some goats from South Texas Angora goats in Texas and they were so full of fleece and had so many skin folds, I all, almost started crying at black sheep gathering when I was shearing them. I just had never shorn an animal with that, that many skin folds and that much surface area and that many ways to cut. And I didn't have the proper blades. I didn't have like a 22 at the time. And I seriously got halfway through the animal and, and, and almost burst into tears because I realized that I could really hurt them. There's areas that are particularly vulnerable. One is the hamstring. I'm very careful on the hamstring because I actually have um, cut a hamstring before the animal had to be put down, and the neck. You also want to make sure that you don't cut their teeth for obvious reasons, and so you put your hand over them when you're sharing the belly area. This is an older doe. She's been shorn a lot. Angoras are kind of divas, and I said that before, so they don't particularly like to be handled, at least mine don't. And so um, that said, she's probably not going to really enjoy it, but, but know that once she's shorn, she's going to be happy and running around and having her tail flipped up over her back and, and being extremely um, comfortable. Here, it's about 110 degrees today, and um, it's just way too hot to have a fleece like this on her. Um, and where goats do have these horns, and they act as radiators, so they can tolerate heat better than a lot of other uh, um, animals that I have, and so I don't feel too bad for her, but with that said, let's get her shorn and let's get her comfortable. Okay, I'm going to lay this doe down, and the way that we do it is we turn their head over their back. I have a master's in animal science and a bachelor's in animal science, and I actually learned this in college, oddly enough. So I'm going to put her head over her back. There we go. There we go. And then I'm going to turn around here. And what I do, for me, I put my, my knee on the side of her shoulder to keep her down. As long as her neck can't get up, she can't get up. I feed a lot of vegetables, which most people know, and so all of this is sugar from the vegetables that have gotten on her, and it actually technically is matted, but it wouldn't have been matted if I didn't feed him so much sugar. Okay, so here we go. It's going to be a little bit loud. I always make sure my clippers blades are really clean, and I oil them a lot, especially for goats, because they don't have lanolin like a sheep. And I just find a place where I'm going to dig in. Okay, so I got my first cut going there. You can tighten up a little bit. There we go. So I just first need to get in. There we go. And once I do that, some of my calves is going to be short. She's not a very heavy doe. The fatter the animal, the easier it is for to shear them. I sort of squirt as I go. And I try not to get second cuts. I know there's one right there, and I'm just going to take it and toss it off to the side. This, she has a very silky fleece. It's kind of hard for my blades to catch. She might be old, but her fleece is so incredibly fine. When I know I'm going to hit a second cut, I just do that. You never lay your blades flat. I always put them at an angle. And like I said, it takes me a lot longer than, than like a professional shear, but I do a couple hundred goats a year. And I get this job done, and I'm able to show my pieces and do quite well. You have to shear blind a little bit. There we go. And the most valuable fleece is on their shoulder. And fleece length is never uniform over the entire body. Around their neck, it's always longer. So I'm pretty careful because I don't want to hook her. And I know her nipples are under her legs, so I'm careful. If you had a male goat, you'd be careful because his pizzle's right here and you don't want to cut his pizzle. And you never want to pull the fleece tight. You can pull the skin, but you never pull the fleece because you'll cut them. a lot of skin. I would never take my blades and go like that because I could get her hook her skin right here and I could cut her really badly. So what I do is I either try to pull her skin 
over her leg like this and then shear it at um, an angle. Like I go this way since, it, since the fold is, goes like this. If I go along with the fold, I'm going to cut her. But if I go across it, perpendicular to it, I won't. And now what I'll do is in here, I'll do this inside of this leg. And I'll probably be able to actually get the inside of this one. Too. And I know her nipples are down there, so I'm very, very, very careful. There's nothing but fleas here. I do not want to cut her. I'm not even putting any pressure on her at all right now. Over here on her neck. And I'm going to pull her skin. So I can get this part. I'm kind of going at an angle. There are so many women that are really great at this and don't get enough recognition. Um, Diane Kuhn does all of her animals. Um, Susie Wilson from Sudan Farms actually teaches women how to how to shear in a stand. And for some women, that's, that, you know, the scan works, it just doesn't work for me. And I have other um, friends in the business that do it with scissors. They shear all the red gorgos with scissors. Which, believe, I mean, and I guess if you get good at it, I have arthritis in my hand, so I can't do that. Okay, so now she's got so much fleece in here, I want to be really careful. I've got her nipples in my hand, because I don't want to cut one off, obviously kind of fat in here which is helping. You get your shearing kind of blind and it's a little scary. And Gora goats are difficult to shear. I had a shear here once that was a only a sheer shear sheep shear, shear and he ended up making my Angora goats look like Edward Superhands has done them. And now I never had them again. That's why I learned to do them myself. Because I'm like, yeah, I can cut them for free. And no, you know, I, I, I don't hold it against him, it just, it didn't work. Plus, I show my pieces, so I needed them to be a certain way, and there were second cuts everywhere, and it just didn't work. This is the part that I hate in here. Honestly, this is my, I, I would, I, it would be awesome if they didn't even grow any fleece in here, and then I'd be done much quicker, let me tell you. So I'm going to skin, so this fleece that would be on her hamstring comes forward in here. And I can lay my blades right here and have less chance of cutting her hamstring. There we go. Okay, so I'll attack this in a little bit. Right now I'm going to go to the shoulder. I, I don't want to waste this fleece on the shoulder because this is where it's really, really um, considered the finest fleece and the, and the best quality. And like I said, this is an older doe and her fleece is, I mean, it might not have great lock structure, but it is so incredibly fine. I'm going to kind of go in here. I'm going to do a zigzag pattern. Move it a little bit. I don't want to catch any of her skin. She has all these skin folds in here. Goats get lice. So I always make sure they don't have any, which my goats shouldn't, believe me. I'm a really diligent, and that is a constant dance. It's controlling lice in your goats. It's not communicable to humans, but it makes your fleeces not very nice and it definitely takes its toll on the animal. I mean, how would you like to itch all the time and not be able to get to it with all this fleece? Under her arm. Get as much as I can there. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I have to get in here. So I'm going to hold her head here, and I'm not going to hurt her. I got her horns right there. Okay, I don't want to really get any of this piece right here. Okay, it'll go a little faster. Once you get the inside of um, their legs on the back, it goes faster. That's just such a delicate area, and it's so easy to cut them. I will see second cut there, no big deal. It starts in here, I get nervous because you know her jugular is here. I got in her neck right here. Want 
make sure my glaze do not feel too hot and they're really actually going along pretty well. It'd be better if I took longer passes, but my muscle memory for doing this is just this way. I take short passes. Okay, I'm going to put some oil on the blade. Hang on, princess. Okay, I'm going to get her face right here. I'm going to cover her eyes. Get some of this off. I have her ear tipped up so I don't cut her ear. And this, you can tell, is really gummy. The shears are having a very hard time getting through it. It's got a lot of debris in it um, from hay and um, lots and lots of it. Thank you, Roni. Okay, thank you, Roni. This is good, please. Thank you. My son's trying to help me, which is oh, very nice of him, but no, Roni, not time. Please, thank you. Thank you. A minute, you can help. Try to get this off. really careful in here. I do not want to pet her. And it's very intimidating to have someone touch your neck when you're a uh, prey animal. Because that's, you know, where um, predators go. They go for the neck and they go for the hamstring. But she's being pretty good. I'm just kind of going at an angle so I don't cut her on the jugular. If I did cut her, it would just be her skin. pretty good. There you go. And angoras can be really flighty and some of it is because they can't see with all this fleece around their face. So it's really nice sometimes, if it's not time to share them, just to go in there and just take off some of this fleece so they can see. So now what I'm going to do is, now that I've gotten through this part, I'm going to pull her up like as if I was going to shear her, like a regular shearer. But see how they can kick and they're strong. And I only weigh 120 pounds. She's, she's not big, but she still can outpower me. I'm going to go in here and just get some of this out. Hang on, hang on. Hang on, I don't want to cut her. And the belly wool, you know, is not very significant. We just sometimes get rid of it. She's got a gorgeous fleece. I cannot believe how old this girl is. It's another Sharon Chestnut, though, I'll tell you. That woman. She's a great breeder. Fat and happy as Phil is. Her name's Niobe. I had her for quite some time. Sarah is just a fantastic breeder. Wow, she's a chunky monkey. She's going to get in here opportunistically. Cover up her nipples, as you can see. It's amazing that I can use a five-year-old doe, doe's fleece, and I can use this. It's awesome. Okay, now this should go fairly quickly because it's almost not our stuff. Okay, so I'm going to look for a good place to cut in. Here we go. Maybe right here. Okay. Now I might be able to make some longer passes. This is so fine. It's like it's like kid mohair, but it just doesn't have the formation that we see in the younger dough. Sort of a zigzag pattern. 